Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Neymar Mountain Dew Code Red Series Race 36, Event 35, and Race 2 of the playoffs here in Season 3. Antonio Rezzo wins the coin toss over Ryan Brommer. So those two start on the front row. Your heat winners from earlier today. The weather has gotten substantially colder, and we've gotten cloud cover. So lap times have really picked up. Heat time qualifying, uh, lap times from the heat qualifying were only about two minute, four second laps. So these cars are really going to fly here today. 16 laps, looking at a two stopper, probably lap six to seven and then lap 12 to 14. So the strategies could make or break winning this race. It is hard to pass here. So Nereza and Brahmer on the front row. Seth Cole and Casey Nanako in row two. Eli Bright, Hunter Braxton in row three. Edwin Mendez and Sky Commons in row four. With Joshua Sikuli and Dale Lightning in row five. Dylan Young and Samet Oskin start in row six. Andrew Rich will start 15th. Audra Baranoskis 17th there in row nine with Johnny Gardner. Matthew Logan, your winner from Iowa. He's locked into the next round. He starts 22nd today. Jonathan Zorlin and Marty Johnson are there next to each other in row number 12. James Ellison, after a, a good performance in his heat race, will start in row 14 next to Bobo Jones. R.J. Bishop starts in 30th. And then two drivers with problems in their qualifying efforts. Something went wrong with Corey Riggs. You can see he's a full second slower than Baco Magora. And Nico Tringali was unable to post a lap time. So the 16 car will come into this second race starting in last. So we take a look at the point standings coming in. Logan, 26 points over Baran Oscus. Having the points lead at the end of a round means nothing. So let's go straight down to the bottom. Zorlin is the first man in. Two points over Bobo Jones. Seven over Tringali. Nine over Nareza. Fourteen over Commons. And 19 over Edwin Mendes. Remember, the command has been given. I believe that's the first one I've heard all season from her. Usually we get the same people, but wow, actually a different command for once. Man, you got to love the randomizing effect. Or I don't know if they're set to play on certain regions, but that is the one we got here today at Road America. As you can see, very, very cloudy. And we're going to do something a little different for a main event. We've usually gone and done this in heat races only. But today, we're going to change it up. So we're going to go to the cockpit camera of Nico Tringali and watch from inside his car here for the start of the race at Road America. We've seen from the heat races that being in the back is where it's hard to slam the brakes and avoid ramming into someone. So could this happen for Tringali or will they stack up mid-pack well before he gets there and who goes three wide where green flag is out here at Road America everyone taking the green flag Nereza got to the line first we've seen the left side lane been strong through the heat races and that's the case you can see right there from the right side of Tringali's windshield that Nereza has cleared Brommer for the lead the first two corners we'll see right here Tringali will show us what the top end speed is from the back of the field it was about 171 and he won but we can already tell that they're going a lot faster he's gonna have to break a lot earlier but 178 for Tringali and there it is there's the banging see RJ Bishop with a poor qualifying effort up here too and look at all this three wide chaos it doesn't look like Tringali got any heavy damage ooh someone's someone's sliding doors right there that was Ellison and Fernandez who were on each other's doors 
Tringali's making short work of things, trying to gain positions. He's already passed four cars. He'll get by Katano for five, and now he'll work his way on Jagger for the sixth car. So Tringali definitely has a fast car, but it's going to be difficult to make these moves. Is there three wide for 38th behind him? Still some crazy three wide up ahead. Matthew Logan, you can see getting whittled back. Fernandez has some hood damage. Peter Onjak as well. Johnson's back end's caved in a bit. Same for Cavanero. So Ellison, Johnson, Logan, Bishop, and Tringali at the back of the field. Who comes to pit road on lap one for damage repair? Fernandez appears to be the only one. Zenzo Nereza leads the field at Road America. What's the top speed here for James Ellison down this stretch? 181, wow. So these cars are really flying here now with this cloud cover. And it's the coolest it's been all day. Jesse Turner sits in 17th. You can see, or 16th actually, a one second gap up to Johnny Gardner. Let's see if we get a really good idea of what th these cars are capable of. Turner should really be able to dive in on the brakes here into this corner. Yeah, it's about 180 over here too. And it looks like we're gonna see a lot of hard braking and a lot of banging. Sky Commons, last driver in the top 10 right now. Dale Lightning fighting for that position next to Dylan Young as those two are side by side for 11th. Commons clears out. Bobo Jones, nope, that's Joshua Sikuli rather. Sikuli 9th, Mendez 8th, Oskin 7th, Bright 6th, Seth Cole in 5th, Hunter Braxton is 4th, Casey Nanako in 3rd. As Brommer trails Enzo Nareza for the lead. Remember, Nareza came close to winning the race all the way back at Martinsville. But it was lap traffic who got in his way. Gave him some performance damage. And it all went out the window. But so far, so good for the 20 car. So we'll see who has the fastest lap times on these first set of tires as they are just flying around this racetrack insanely fast. Ooh, Brommer got a pretty good corner there. We'll see if it helps him on the straightaway. So he closes in on the bumper of lap times here. There it is, a 203.884 by Brommer. As you see scattered through the field are better lap times. So we should see some passing here today. Ryan Brommer has won a total of three main events this season, including one road course win back at Tula. He also won the first international race, which was at Rio. That was an oval, though. And then his other main event win comes all the way back, race six at Memphis. Running in third is Casey Nanako, teammate to Samet Oskin, who's in the playoffs. Nanako had to win at Kansas to get in, and he was unable to do it. But a great season so far by Nanako. If you look at the point standings for the drivers outside the playoffs, so actually not technically a great season for Nanako. He's missed four races, but three top fives, five top tens. His average finish is under 20, considering where he is in the point standings. He comes into this race today, a total of 43 points behind Joshua Sikuli for the best of the rest spot for 21st in the points. So Pittswater comes in eight points behind Sikuli. Cavanero's 24th in points with Adam Flickinger, 25th. Cole Deaver, 26, Jesse Turner, 27th, Quentin Moore, Corey Riggs, Benny Watson, your top 30 in the points. And then Colt Hudson comes in 23 points behind Watson. It's really remarkable that Colt Hudson, one top five, six top tens, he's had very bad luck. He's missed 
11 races this season, yet he is in front of drivers who have made seven more starts than him, and he is just behind drivers who have made eight more starts than him and so on. So Hudson has really performed well. The gap from Hudson in 31st to Ott's in 32nd is a full 55 race points. 33rd Fernandez is two points back, as is Martin Wilde. And then another 70-point drop back to Peter Onjak. The drops really start coming in when you get down to 39th. Voiles 20 back of King. Tremblay is 29 back of Voiles. Anderson 49 back of him. Rowe is then 31 points down. And then it goes through Cage, Jagger, Katano, Magora, Beckett, and Wheeler. The numbers go 10 points, 12 points, 19, 20, 15, and 51 for Chris Wheeler. Wheeler and Beckett both making their 15th starts on the season today. Beckett currently in 30th. Chris Wheeler in 38th. As now Slade Jagger has come down pit road. Unsure why. His car looks clean. Perhaps strategy. As pit stops should come in around lap six. We're going to take a quick break here at Road America. Just about two minutes. So you're only going to miss one lap of action. We're back here at Road America. Three wide battle for third. And now it leaves Braxton side by side with Seth Cole. But Braxton will pull ahead for the position. They were three wide down the front straightaway. We had decided to come back a minute early. Now Bright is side by side with Nanako for what would be fifth. As Austin dives in hard and makes contact with Eli Bright. And now Nanako back side by side with Seth Cole. Nanako had held up these guys to where they were four seconds behind race leader Nareza. Seth Cole will clear for fourth place. It's another three points for him and Hunter Braxton. And that will help them advance to the round of two if they do not win a race here in the first round. So Bright will hold on to six for now. Oscar seventh. Mendez holding on to eighth. Sky Commons has moved up to tenth. And Andrew Rich is into eleventh. I also realized that with the cloudy weather, these guys might start pitting here on lap five. That's likely what Jagger did. Yeah, Baran Oscus came down one lap ago. Different strategies occurring on the track. Fall off is about a second already. So we'll see if anyone comes down pit road here on lap five. Not from the top two. Nereza and Brommer will stay out. They're looking at a two-stop race. Seth Cole still pushing the issue there on Braxton as Austin looks for a position on Eli Bright. And man, Andrew Rich will pass Sky Commons for 10th there at the line. And he's looking for 9th on Sakuli. He's really been hammering it in. You can see all the different lap times here at the back. Rich wants the position. Rich did not have the best of days at Iowa. He sits 13th in the points, the lowest of the drivers with four or more wins on the season. So he'll take 10th from Commons, who's falling backwards. As now Eli Bright with a move on Casey Nanako for fifth, looking for another two points. Braxton and Seth Cole have cleared them, but they are still nowhere close to as fast as Brommer or Nareza. It could come down to Pitt's strategy. Bright still trying to get by Nanako for fifth. And he get it done. Yes, he does. Put the 88 to the top five. Or is it over yet? And Nanako's looking to charge back there to the right side, but he can't quite get there. And Nanako is officially out of the top five. Brommer has started lagging back from Enzo Nareza. He was holding a good four tenths at least every lap. Pit strategy could really make or break this race. Toyota looking for their first win. Now I've said it 
I said it at Iowa. The way the trends have gone is Chevy usually wins 11 races in a row. As Nerezo will actually pit a lap here on lap six. Brommer will stay out as this Braxton and Seth Colt. Eli Bright will come in as well. So we'll go to Ryan Brommer, but we're going to go to the pit lane two camera to watch who comes in. Sky Commons is in. Cole Deaver. So Nereza, Bright, Commons, Deaver, and Cole Baker are the first five to hit pit road here on lap seven. Benjamin Ice, Frodemar Otts appear to be the rest. So perhaps Nereza on a two-stop strat. Oh, maybe not. He took left sides only there. Everyone, left side tires only. So the left side's wearing the most, it seems. Brommer stays out. Now back to the trend I was talking about. Chevy won the first 11 races before Nico Tringali won at Dover for Ford's first win. Chevy again went on to win 11 straight races before Zorlin ended the streak at Pugica in the round one race of that double header. Since Chevy has once again gone on a winning streak, first with three races in a row by JD Motorsports, followed by five in a row by Junior Motorsports. Bring in the win by Johnson and Seth Cole to end the regular season. They were at 10. And once again, Matthew Logan wins at Iowa. It's up to 11. So will this happen once again? Will we see Chevy's winning streak end after winning 11 straight races? <laughs> it's quite the interesting trend. To have happened twice is pretty is kind of reasonable, but for three times would be unbelievable. Very, very big coincidence. So Brommer's going to come in here and pit on lap seven. And we'll see if everyone else follows him in. It looks like that will be the case. So we will have a very busy pit road coming to lap eight. There you can see Braxton, Braxton can see Brahma right now. But it's a huge gap, five seconds is. So we saw Enzo and his group took left sides only. Will this group do the same? Yeah, they do. Brahma takes left sides only. There he goes out of pit road. Here comes Nereza. And Nereza is going to lose positions on the truck. Almost contact with Hunter Braxton. Now, one thing going for Nereza right here is his left sides have warmed up. But will it be enough to close in on all the time he's lost to Brommer, who's had a much, much better pit stop? So Nereza currently down to second, Braxton third, Seth Cole fourth, and side-by-side -side battle between Baran Oskis and Oskin for fifth. Baran Oskis, remember, pit really early. She's on a completely different two-stop strategy, and she will cross over the 22 for this position. So this is for fifth place. Back to seventh is Brighton Mendez. Ninth now is Nanako, and in tenth is Sakuli. Baran Oskis. Remember, cold tires are worse than worn tires. So Baran Oskis will hold on to fifth for now, but she's running 207.8s already. So once those guys warm up their tires, she will be blown out of the water, per se. As Nereza's trying to track down Brommer as much as he can. You see Rich with the fastest time on the track at 2.03597. Rich currently sits in, I believe, 12th now after pit stops. So we'll be halfway through the race after a lap of warming up the tires. 
the Reza is coming down the front stretch he's looking for that lead back and there's the move down the straightaway at the start finish line halfway through this race it's a side-by-side -side battle between the 3 and the 20 but brahmer has got the preferred line through corner one and he'll hold on to the lead for now Braxton third, Seth Cole fourth, Eli Bright fifth as Baran Oscus brings it down pit road. Looking for who's doing bad. Marty Johnson, James Ellison there outside the top 30. Matthew Logan's locked in, so we're going to skip him. RJ Bishop not having a good run. And Nico Tringali, though, has made it up to 24th after starting last. We'll see where he ends up getting to. We're going to take another break as Ryan Brommer has taken the lead after pit stops over the 20 of Enzo Nereza. We're back here at Road America, and you're probably wondering what has happened. Well, the drivers have elected to do a weird strat where they go the full first run, they pit, and then they do their short run in the middle of the race and pit again. So now they're good to go till the end. But Hunter Braxton and a handful of others have stayed out on the track. And we'll see if they elect to go to lap 12 or 13 when they will have to pit. Or if they pit this coming lap. That could also be the reason we saw left side tires only on the first stop. So what does Hunter Braxton do here? He's got the race lead. And he's coming in. Braxton will lead on to pit road, I believe, the rest of the field. We'll see here what the strategy is at six to go. And it's the opposite of what they did on the first run. It's right sides only. Lucas Catano and Baco Magora are staying on the track. I'm not sure if that's part of strategy or not. But Braxton comes out of pit road in front of Brian Brommer. Right next to him he does. But Brommer takes the lead away. Hunt Enzo Nareza is way behind now. Seth Cole fourth and Mendez is fifth. It's down to two Chevys here. Can Brommer pull away with his heated up right side tires? I believe these two are the leaders right now. Yes, indeed. Lucas Catano is currently leading this race. How about that? So Catano and Magora currently lead the field. And Brommer has pulled away from Braxton. Braxton's got to wait this one lap. His tires to heat up, but it's it's really costing him right now. Every driver still on the racetrack. You gotta wonder with the one lap fresher right side tires, will that be an advantage for Braxton in these last five laps? So not the pit strategy I expected here at Road America, but it's the one we got. Katano and Magora are gonna keep running on the track. They stay out, I guess they're gonna do the, they're gonna push it all the way here. Let's see what their lap times are. 206-171 for Katano, a 487 for Magora. 
Brommer with a 205-248 is 7.3 seconds back. And Braxton, you can see, really lost ground. He's lost a position to Nereza. And Seth Cole is challenging him now for what is currently fifth place. So Braxton lost way too much time waiting for his tires to heat up. So he is likely not going to be able to catch Ryan Brommer. This is Brommer's race to lose. Katano and Morgora will have to pit eventually here, whether it's at four to go or three to go. But a rare occasion where two cars from the back of the field lead a race. Brommer's crew chief likely telling him these two have to pit. And he's got four and a half seconds to fourth place Enzo Nareza. So just take care of your car. And fourth win of the season to Ryan Brommer will be confirmed. He is definitely gaining on these guys though. He was a second faster that last time by. see how many laps more these two want to push it they should come out higher than wherever they were at the back of the field though Bobo Jones has had some problems he's 38th Johnson 37th Ellison 33rd Logan 32nd Bishop 30th and so on Katano and McGore continue to stay out it's four to go here at Road America Let's see, how much time does Brommer close in this lap? Oh, and Katano has blown the motor right in front of Bako Magora. Katano loses the motor. What will this do to Brommer? Katano's in the middle of the track. He gets out of the way, off the corner, and he'll stop it right there. Tough break for the leader, Lucas Catano. Something broke in the lead, and now Baco Magora is out here in the lead by himself. Five-second advantage over Brommer. Now, even if he were to make it to the end, he would get caught for the lead. But a tough break for Catano. Losing the engine right in front of Magora. Bobo Jones now in last place. Problems continue to plague the zero. Johnson, you can see way back. Logan, Ellison, Bishop. Gardner's at the back. Tringali has made it up to 21st and starting in last. Benjamin Ice having a pretty good run. There's Baran Oscus. She already did her second stop, I believe. She's up to 13th. So there's Brommer in second. Closing in on Magor. We'll be at three to go this time. Bye. Looks like Magor is probably going to come in the pit this time. I could be mistaken. Mistaken. Nope, he's coming in. And that will give the lead officially back to Ryan Brommer. So we're actually going to take one last break. And we'll be back for two to go here at Road America. Welcome back to Road America. As we ride on the bumper camera of Ryan Brommer taking the lead back. And they are coming for him. Enzo Nareza gaining three tenths that time by. Seth Cole in third. Hunter Braxton fourth. Eli Bright rounds out the top five. Oskin in sixth. Mendez seventh. Sakuli eighth. Baran Oskis up to ninth. With Andrew Rich rounding out the top ten. So you just got to wonder... Does everyone have enough fuel to the finish? 
As a reminder, this was the final road course next race. In fact, let's look at the next two races because there are only two races left in the first round of the playoffs, Chicagoland and then Gateway. We'll finish off round one. And as it stands right now, Brommer and Logan will have done something that I don't believe has happened yet. I'm going to confirm. Actually, no, it has happened. So the statistic I speak of is two races in a row where a Heat winner wins the main event. It happened with Braxton and Nelson all the way back at the beginning of the season. They won Heat races at Rockingham and North Wilkesboro. They went on to win the main event. So that happened back-to-back -back weeks back then. I'm trying to see if there were any other occurrences. Uh, yes, Watkins Glen and Island Rally, it happened. Audra Baran Oscas at Watkins Glen and Matthew Loken at Island Rally. Let's see. Any other races has this occurred at? Ah, uh, yes, it, when Andrew Rich went back to back at Provo and ISM, he also went back to back for heat race wins. So he did that all by himself. And that is the most recent time for that to happen. So this will be the fourth time the season this has happened. Where a driver who's won a heat race wins the main event two races in a row. Seth Cole has made it into third. Braxton up to fourth. So Nereza will lose six points as he plummets to fifth. Or fourth, rather. That's seven points, actually. Seven points lost from second to fourth. Seth Cole will now get 50 points. Braxton, 46. Nerezo, 43. As Austin is looking to get two more points himself. He wants fifth place from Eli Bright. Can he take it away from the 88? Not right now. He can. He has to hold back in line here. Seth Cole has driven away from Braxton. So Seth Cole, I guess, was like, yeah, we're not catching the leader. I want four more points. So he passed Nereza, and Braxton was able to get by him, too, and get another three points himself. Two races. Two heat wins for Ryan Brommer. And now... What he was not able to accomplish at Iowa, it looks like he will accomplish here today at Road America. We've got one more corner to go. Matthew Logan won at Iowa, locked himself into the round of 15. And today, Ryan Brommer will join him as Ryan Brommer wins his fourth race of the season here at Road America. It's Brommer's first win since the International Tour when he won his third race of the season at Tula. It's also his second road course victory of the season. And it gives him another five playoff points, which he will get to use at the start of round two in the Neymar Mountain Dew Code Red Series playoffs. Rounding out the rest of the top five and top ten, Seth Cole second, Hunter Braxton third, Enzo Nerezo, your pole sitter, will end up fourth. Back to fifth is Eli Bright holding off Samet Oskin. Oskin will end the day in sixth. Sakuli seventh, the highest non-playoff driver. Teammate Edwin Mendes gets eighth. Audra Baranowskis on her weird strategy ends up finishing ninth. And Andrew Rich will round out the top 10, finishing in 10th place. Dale Lightning, 11th. Great run by Benjamin Ice to get 12th. Sky Commons, 14th. Jonathan Zorland, 16th. Dylan Young, 17th. 
Nico Tringali started the day in 40th. He finishes in 19th place. Something very hard to do at a road course. Johnny Gardner, 21st. As the results are official. So 21st for Johnny Gardner. St. Beckett got 26. That's a decent run for that team. RJ Bishop, 27th. There you see Lucas Catano in 40th with the clutch issue. Magora went on to finish 33rd. So Catano likely would have been a little farther above. James Ellison, tough day, 29th. Matthew Logan, 30th. Tough day for him. Luckily, he has the win from Iowa. Marty Johnson will finish 34th. Not the run he needed. And Bobo Jones, with unknown issues, finishes in 39th place. So that'll do it for me here at Road America. I will see you all at Chicagoland for the third race of the playoffs. Congrats again to Ryan Brommer on his fourth win of the season here today at Road America.